Hey everybody, we are teaching Tilt Brush. And today's uh, teaching Tilt Brush, we're going to look at grouping groups. That's right, we are now able to connect objects together, shapes that we paint of many pieces into one object. Grouping is new as of November 2019. So if you're just joining us, groups are part of what you got. If you've been using Tilt Brush for a while, this could be a new thing. This is added to the selection tool we have changed the way this panel works. So we now have the usual pieces of the selection tool. We're going to move up so you can see this. But we now have this group selection as well. So this is new as of version 22. 22. This is the newer update as of November 2019. This version has this grouping tool. A few other things, but we're going to cover those in other lessons. So the grouping tool, here's how it's going to work. I'm going to paint an object of many pieces. In this case, we'll keep it simple. I'm going to paint a lovely little tree. So let's get a tree trunk here. Get a couple branches coming off. Tree. Now, we're also going to use other brushes in other colors. Just get some tree action going here. A couple of different colors, a couple of different brushes. Get some highlights, get some shadow down here. Those underneath branches getting a little darker. Okay, we've got our lovely tree. Now, normally, if I wanted to make a forest, I could select this whole thing, all the different pieces. Now I can duplicate it, move it around, grow it, shrink it, that type of thing. But if I then go and do something else, I'm going to go back and paint something. Let's get some lovely sky going in here. Why are you so tiny? Anyway, so now if I go back with my selection tool, I'm going to have to get the whole tree all over again. I can't just grab the tree as a structure. So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to select the whole tree. And this time, while it's selected, now we choose that group selection and it brings up the little message saying that it's grouped. Now I can grab this tree, move it around, grow it and shrink it just like always, even duplicate it. But now if I go and do something else, now I'm going to turn off my selection tool, paint something over here. Now if I go back and click any part of this, it stays one object. It stays a group. If I duplicate this, this duplicate object is also a group. So if I make several of these things, now I go back and I choose this one, you're still a whole group. This one, you're still a whole group. This one, you're still a whole group. So it does retain its group factor. Now if I save this sketch, load in a whole different sketch, save this sketch, a lovely shot of the tree here. And I go somewhere else. Let's go to the library. Here we are in the library. It does remember groups that had been previously made. So if I now go back to that location, here we are, and I go to my selection tool, this is still a whole group. So these groups are persistent. We can keep these groups from day to day. So as we come back to it, we don't have to worry about losing groups or regrouping. They do remember this one wasn't a group. Oops. That one is a group. That one is a group. That one is a group. So each of these only took one click to get all the pieces. In fact, what I'm going to do, let's move you closer. If I group objects 
after they've already been grouped. So I'm now going to grab these three. You can see I've got all three objects now. If I turn these guys into a group, yes, this is now considered one group, one object. I go over here and grab this, move this around. Like, let's get rid of it. Now, if I go back to here, this whole piece is one new group. However, the original groups are gone. You cannot have part of your painting part of more than one group. If you do regroup this, now the individual tree is gone and a trio of trees is the group. So if I ungroup this now, ungroup, the button that turned it on turns it off again, ungroup, now each tree is back to its component pieces. If I turn off the selection and go back in again, you can see it's not the whole tree anymore. Now it's broken back into its components. So the moment you ungroup something, it goes back to all individual pieces. So even if I have this big group here going, group, and then I combine it with other groups, group all that. And then I combine it with more other groups. Let's add this guy to it. Sure, why not? Group it all. This whole thing is considered one piece. So if I paint something down and then select any of these pieces, let's grab the sun. Anything that's been grouped now sticks together. I guess I didn't group everything completely. Uh, or I undid a little too far. But the point is, once these groups are persistent, if you keep adding to it, it's still the same one group. You can't remember the smaller subgroups. The overall group is all that exists. This is now a big three-piece thing. Oops, I missed a branch. Three-piece thing. If I were to group other pieces to it, it's all one piece. If I were to ungroup it, all three trees go back to their individual pieces. <clears throat> so, what we've seen, groups, oh, I do have the sun, there we go. Groups are persistent. Once you set them up, the sketch will save those groups from session to session. These groups are also all, at, all or nothing. You can't have one tree be part of several groups. If I have a group forest, there are no individual trees. If I just have the individual tree as a group, let's ungroup these guys. Now I just grab this one tree and group it. I can make a whole forest out of it. Each tree is its own little group. You're a group. You're a group. You're a group. Whoops. You're a group. But if I was to select several and group them, now they've lost their identity as individual trees. It is one triple object. If I ungroup them, it does not go back into individual trees. The whole thing shatters back into its individual components, like a jigsaw puzzle. So groups, it's part of your selection tool. The button that turned it on turns it off again. But bear in mind, ungrouping reduces this whole thing back to its individual leafy and branchy components. Now, these groups do work with more than just painting. If I actually bring in some poly models, so let's open up the labs and bring in some local media stuff. These imported models or objects from poly, for example, they can be part of groups as well. So if I select the castle and some trees, and group them, yes, the poly model is part of the group. So now I can grab this over here. Whoops, let's unselect, get you out of the way. But now if I select any of those components, I get that whole group. So poly models, 
can also be part of these groups. Anything you import, so your local reference images or your local reference videos, can be part of these groups. If you do put that in poly, bear in mind any of your local library objects, images, models, and videos, won't get uploaded as part of poly. If you want other people to see your pictures and videos, they need to load those as separate objects first, and then the sketch will be able to find those pieces. They're not saved as part of the sketch. Groups are saved as part of the sketch. So if I save this as a group and save the sketch and load it up to Poly, anybody else using this should be able to access the tree as a group. So that's our new feature, the group ability of the selection tool. That's part of version 22 as of November 19, uh, 2019. Let's get rid of some of these pieces here. If you have any questions, let us know. If you have any ideas of what you'd like to learn about, let us know that as well. We do these things every week and we've been doing them for a while. We have no signs of stopping. So feel free to sign up so you're notified whenever we get any new ones. And let us know in the comments if there's a subject you'd like us to talk about. Thanks for joining us for today's Teaching Tilt Brush and we'll see you next time. Have fun, Tilt Brush!